just sitting with legs crossed and then put the head down. But actually, that's not the proper way to offer it. In bhakti yoga, you have to open your legs. I, I, when I see that, I think someone is saying, please accept my frog-like obeisances. It looks a bit like a frog with a cross leg. Anyway, uh, here at Krishna Life today, I'm going to speak on a topic being inspired by the great yogi, Chandanacharya Das Brahmachari, <coughs> who asked me to speak, especially because there are newcomers saying that if I speak, seeing as most of you, with a definite exception of Ranjur Prabhu, is more of a young monk, so they might get inspired by seeing an old monk and get the idea that, yeah, you can do it all your life. You can, it is possible. If he can do it, I can do it. That's what I thought when I joined. When I joined, or when they allowed me to stay very mercifully, said, okay, you turn 16 rounds a day. I thought, what, 16 rounds? Because there was no concept at that time of one round, and then after some time you do two rounds. You're going to be a devotee and chant 16 rounds. I, then I looked around me at the, other, at, at the devotees, and I thought, well... They all came from a pretty similar background as me, and they're all doing it. I guess I can do it too. So by seeing others who are doing it, you get the idea that uh, maybe I could do it too. So the topic of this talk is how to remain a lifelong monk. Of course, it's not over yet. Maya didn't stop. It's not that when you, you, you reach a, re a retirement age. In, in Britain, I'm not sure now, it used to be 65, you retire. Maya doesn't retire. And uh, I, I hear of devotees, Prabhupada disciples, getting married, even at 80 years old. Which in America might seem like, yeah, <laughs> good idea. But... Uh, at least in India up to the present time, it seems less than respectable to do that because old age is meant for living a dignified life. Last time I was here, there was an old man, Gujarati man, who was... Yeah, wanted to get, did he marry? Uh, I didn't, uh, didn't follow up on him. He wants to marry. He's already one and a half feet in the grave. <laughs> Of course, Hindus, they don't have graves. Mostly, some of them do. Anyway, it's not over yet, but so far, hanging in there. Sometimes people ask me, hey, what are you doing? What do you get up? They ask us about what you're doing, and how long have you been in it? And they say, are you happy? I say, well, look, you know, after, I'd be pretty stupid to spend my whole, whole life doing this if I wasn't happy. Uh, yeah, susukam kartam avyayam, we find in Bhagavad Gita. It's an ever, never diminishing process, which is very happy. Susukam means very happy. Lifelong, well, it's not expected that everyone will remain lifelong as a monk, but we'll, we're looking at a commitment to be lifelong in Krishna consciousness. Initiation means lifelong and life after life. <clears throat> Commitment to remain in Krishna consciousness. It's quite uh, acceptable and recommended that young men, uh, even if they feel they're not up to being a monk all their life, spend some time living a monastic life. Uh, in Thailand, for instance, it is expected of every young man to become a monk for some time. And then they can marry after that. So how did, how did I do it? How did I get this far? <clears throat> <clears throat> 
Well, I said susukam karta mavyayam uh, is a happy life, no doubt. You, you can't stick to something. Well, maybe you could. You just get inured to it. I used that word yesterday. Inured means you get used to something. You know, It's not very good, but you just get used to it. So, so someone might think, well, it's better to be in prison because at least you get some food and place to stay. So you might think it's better. Some people, they, they, they get released from prison and they go and burgle a shop or something and make sure they get caught so they get put back in prison. Shama Sunda, the astrologer, told me that you have to be very careful when making predictions because you see someone's chart, it looks like they're going to be in prison. They, they live a, a life, they're not, they have to stay in one place, they're under strict discipline, uh, they have to do what they're told all the time. But it could mean someone in a, in a monastery also. It's very similar in many ways. <laughs> the difference is that in a monastery, you're there for a higher purpose, voluntarily accepting discipline. So that should be understood. You don't become a monk just to get away from, have a break, have a break. In some ways, it's more difficult. You may think that, well, being a monk, it's, uh, yeah, you don't have to work. You do have to work, at least in our tradition. And actually, all monastic traditions, you have to do some some work. Your food is taken care of. Your living accommodations is taken care of. In the 1960s, uh, Srila Prabhupada told the devotees to get clearance from the draft board so that the devotees didn't get sent off to Vietnam. And the uh, so a, a draft board inspector came and inspected the temples to see, well, is it just some kind of scam to get away from being in the army? He came and saw how devotees are living and said, it's, it's more difficult than the army. <laughs> hmm? Especially in those days. Especially in those days, yeah. Yeah, when I first came, it was uh, only cold showers, and it was cold. <laughs> really cold. But that was it. Uh, how did I remain a lifelong monk? Well, in one way it was... It was easy in as much as I decided before I took to the monastic life that if I can find such a thing, I wasn't in much hope of finding the, uh, the kind of situation and the kind of people that would help me to find God. I wasn't hopeful of that. I was pretty hopeless of it. But I thought if I do find it, then I just got to, you got to do it. You got to do it seriously, and there's there's no meaning to being a half monk. Uh, they can be. They, uh, someone told me that in in one temple in India, uh, he was interested in joining, and some senior brahmachari said to him that what, what are you going to join full time for? He said, what do you want to join full time for? And then he said, well, I guess it's okay now. I'm a senior. They give me a room of my own with air conditioning. and So it is possible to be uh, what Bhaktisthan Sasar Thakur called a matua. That you, uh, or it's an oriata. I mean, someone who lives in a mud because they, they, they don't have anything better to do. They, they, couldn't make a, they couldn't make it in the world. And you have to do a few things and then your food is taken care of. It's one way of living. So it, 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 that's a half monk. You just go through the motions. But I decided that before I came that if I'm going to get into a monastic line, then I've got to really get into it. And yeah, I, for me, it, it, it wasn't a question of shall I 
do it or shall I not do it? I never thought of, I'm just saying my personal experience, I never thought of, having come, I never thought of doing anything else. I thought this is the mercy of God upon me and this is what I'm meant to do. So it wasn't a big struggle in my mind whether I should stay as a monk or go and do something else. It's I, I don't see a better life than this, of reviving our relationship with God, living in association with devotees. It, was, it really impressed me when uh, I, I first visited that Bhaktivedanta Manor near London. Uh, I, I intended to come and go back in the evening. Circumstantially, all kinds of things happened which prevented me from leaving, so I had to stay overnight. And uh, <laughs> they, they got me up early in the morning, put me in a cold shower, which wasn't fun. And uh, But I thought, yeah, these people are serious. And I get up every morning, and it's cold, snowing outside. They didn't have heating in the building, couldn't afford it. And uh, and Mongoladi, and everyone's dancing. So, wow, these people do this every day. <laughs> they get up early in the morning, take a cold shower, and dance for God. Oh, I got to do this. Yes, that's right. <laughs> There's nothing, I can't imagine anything better than this. And uh, if you think, what's outside? What is there? What, what is there? What are you going to do? What, what is desirable out there in, in materialistic life? Even if you think I'll just live in the country very peacefully, there's no peace in the country. <laughs> You've got your mind. And you, might, you might say, I'll just go and live in the forest alone. And then you go and live in the forest and alone. And then uh, after a few months, they... they uh, some big oil company comes and bulldozes down the forest and, and makes a pipeline or so you just, there's no guarantee in the material world. It's always it's always something miserable. Your fate goes against you. There's nothing in the material world. There's substance in Krishna consciousness. Monastic life means you're going for for an ideal, something higher than simply living, eating, sleeping, bickering, passing stool, getting old and dying. You've got a higher ideal of life. It means yeah, going against the flow. There will be difficulties from our own mind and uh, institu even within a religious institution there will be disagreements within an institution, there, there will be some politics, but you just have to stick to it, that's all. And day after day you just apply yourself to the process. You get up in the morning, you're chanting, you study the scripture, uh, and you have to apply yourself mentally to the process. And that always be there, not just physically, but with your heart and soul also. And we find Krishna conscious, it, it is a very happy process. If we apply ourselves to it, then we'll always get inspiration. So that's it in brief. I told you it'd be a short talk. It's, it's pretty simple to me. I, it's just like I, 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 don't, I can't get into all this psychological stuff of deep analysis and all that. Going to be Krishna going, okay, do it. That's all. <laughs> it's a simple process. Just chant Hare Krishna and that's it. That's pretty easy. So I was supposed to inspire you and uh, you're all inspiring to me also to see Young people take it up. So it's mutual inspiration. In America, 
more than any other country. There are many disciples of Srila Prabhupada still alive and with us. So that's inspiring. Not everyone remains a monk per se all their life, but there are many, many devotees who have, uh, as, not as monks, but in married life, and uh, they've remained solidly in Krishna consciousness. So that's inspiring. Okay. Hare Krishna. Any questions? Very much. Um, you, you're speaking about how politics may also, and you know, be in the religious institution, but we need to move past it. There's politics in religious institutions. Yeah, I I don't believe there's any religious institution in the world where there's no politics. I I, I especially as it gets bigger. There are differences of opinion about how things should be done. There's money, there's power, there's prestige. These are all temptations. And people have very strong opinions about what should be done, and then they may uh, employ less than honorable means to try to get their way. These things are there. Move past it, well, it's always going to be there. But uh, you have to re remain inspired despite it. You can't avoid it altogether. But you have to see that these, these things, are, they're, they're not the essence. Now that will go on, but we have to go on with our chanting every day, our activities in Krishna consciousness. Uh, yeah, and oh, I was saying it, you're giving inspiration, but and it's what a good life it is. But what we have the best people to live with also. Yeah. That's another thing. Yeah. People with such an ideal, lead, leading such a pure life. Hmm. Is there a way that it, we could prevent these politics from... Is there a way that we can prevent these politics? <laughs> uh, I don't think so, because it's there even in the spiritual world. <laughs> Not in Vaikuntha. But if <laughs> Vaikuntha, everything is nice. But in the Golok Vrindavan, there's spiritual politics also. Oh. Okay. How to, how to uh, <laughs> cheat Kutila and Jatila, <laughs> and uh, how to how to put Radha up and put Chandravali down. These things are going on, as Prabhupada would say. So it's a reflection <laughs> of, the sp of the spiritual world. It, can we spiritualize the material politics? Can we spiritualize? Well, it already is spiritual. In as if, if the devotees who are politicking, Srila Prabhupada said that, that uh, if the sender is Krishna, if the aim is to serve Krishna, even though there may be very strong differences of opinion, then it's not material. A prime example of that is just two, three days before Srila Prabhupada passed away from this world, there was a big dissension between two groups of Srila Prabhupada's disciples as to whether you should follow Prabhupada's order to take him on Govardhan Parikrama or not. And they were both sides were very strong. You have to do what one says. They have to do what Prabhupada said. And the other said, "No, I take him on a bullock cart, and he's he's not going to survive it." So they were both thinking how to serve Srila Prabhupada the best, but there was a very strong difference of opinion there. And apart from that, there may be that which is like mundane politics also with and some is nasty that's there can't say it's not hmm. Guru Maharaj, so choose your association carefully as far as you can when uh, when when a devotee joins um, full-time as a brahmachari um, often there is that enthusiasm that I'm going to transcend my conditioning, I'm going to transcend my yeah, attachments. Yeah. But then after a while, you, you know, you realize that they yeah. haven't gone so easily. And in fact, after a while, sometimes that 
enthusiasm or inspiration may even wear off to some extent and then they're like well i don't think i don't know if i could do this you know my whole life i don't know if i can avoid um whatever playing some sport or some something something silly they know it's silly but you know it's um well that's up to you Very serious in the beginning, very enthusiastic, and after some time, less so. Again, you have to see what, what, did, what did you come for? Why did you come? Keep good association. Um, Maharaj, um, mm. so maybe, like, what is the level of... Sit properly! Um, <laughs> what is the... What is the level of bliss like as you as you go bliss to you can't over, order it over <laughs> amazon send me three boxes <laughs> you can order bliss, bliss you can get bliss bars yeah pure bliss bars too i think guru goranga makes go, bliss yeah, bars go, right go, go with them, go with them. yeah you you can't it's a gift it comes down if we're thinking how i can get bliss we generally won't get it if we're thinking how we can serve selflessly, then we won't even notice how blissful we are. I think you might have just answered my question, but I'll ask anyway. Um, how, what, what would be the best way of dealing with like wanting to help your family or, or people that are look up to you or well, there's no need to stop that when you come to Krishna consciousness. Help your fa you mean help your family in as much as uh, working and giving them money? More so, people who look up to me, How? what would be the best way to lead I, them? I don't know them? exactly what you're referring to, but as a general principle, you can help people by introducing them to Krishna consciousness, which is their, for their best eternal benefit. How would you recommend like maintaining relationships with people that are outside of Krishna consciousness? Maintaining relationships with people outside of Krishna consciousness. If people want to maintain mundane relationships, relationships you on a mundane platform, it's better not to. You don't have to be nasty with people, but the, but uh, they'll probably lose interest in you also. Family members, if you can maintain some relationship. It's not, it's, it's, especially parents, they put so much energy to raising you. So that can be there. But they're going to have to come to terms with the fact that you didn't turn out the way they expected. You can ask different devotees, they all have different stories. Every, it's all, every case is different. Some parents, it's not so common nowadays, but they're, they're strongly against their children becoming devotees. In such a case, you may have to chill out the relationship or suspend it for some time and, until they change their mind, which they usually do. It's hard to say. It's different in different cases. We have anyone here who's, who's a monk, a brahmachari, whose parents are strongly against them doing this? Anyone? Yourself. We have three. And then I know Jita Girish, his parents, they're not against. They come here. His mother puts on a sari, joins them. Is it? Yeah. It's what about the nuns? We have monks and we have nuns. Not exactly nuns, because we say that the women should get married. The nuns are all married too, you know that? They're all married to Jesus. That came up in a court case in Poland. 
that uh, you know about that that uh, that someone was accusing the child they're being brainwashed to become a Hare Krishna and say you see that God has 16,108 wives and then the the defendant said well these nuns they all claim themselves to be wives of Jesus and how many wives has he got? <laughs> Anything your parents are strongly against? Hmm? She's against you being here. My father didn't care at all. Either way, whatever you want to do, just do it. That's all. I already, already left home. <laughs> I was, uh, he, he, I was out. Your sons and daughters are beyond your control. Today's a day for. 1960s pop music. Yeah. You know that one? Anyone? Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan, yeah. The times they are are changing. And that's one line I just remember. But nothing changed much. It's still eating, sleeping, mating. In the 1960s there was this feeling like there's going to be a great change in the world and flower power. And just went on. Eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. And the Soviet Union collapsed, but they reinvented America versus Russia. So, same old thing going on. My question is, what would be the best way to maintain Krishna consciousness while you're still attending university? What would be the best way to maintain Krishna consciousness while still attending university? The better person to ask that to is someone who's maintaining Krishna consciousness while attending university, <laughs> which is not me. <laughs> Jitta Girish is here, ask him. Jitta Girish. What is that? <laughs> you can do it. Again, it's a question of uh, your own personal determination. It's going to be more difficult when you've got materialistic people all around you, beautiful young women all around you, beautiful and willing, more than willing. They're, they're, yeah. Guru Maharaj, um, there's a saying, don't be surprised by who um, leaves Krishna consciousness. Apparently, Srila Prabhupada said that. Don't be surprised. When devotees were shocked, someone left. And apparently, Srila Prabhupada said, don't be surprised if people leave. Be surprised if someone stays. So, devotees may be like very fired up, um, you know, in the, in, the, in the history of ISKCON, but they left. Um, Maharaj, if you could... Like, tell us if you see any, like, symptoms of the devotees who stay, you know. Symptoms of devotees who stay. Well, it's hard to say because it is quite common that you see someone who looks like they're doing very well and then one day they're just not there. They've gone away. Actually, it's not so common nowadays. Because I guess because there's the the general mushy Krishna consciousness which you can merge into, it's not it's it's not so uh, black and white as it used to be. It's, we used to have very high commitment, and then it's like it's all or nothing. But now there's uh, being uh, half baked is the norm, so it's easier to merge into that. Or, or uh, if devotees want to get married, that's also after being a monk for some time. That's also quite acceptable, and devotees know that. So, so uh, we don't see that so often as we used to. Kumaraja, so I have another question. So, out of the devotees that transition into the grihastha ashram. Do you see a trend in the the, the brought like what Brahmachari 
qualifications usually turn into good grihastha qualifications. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it, living in this this disciplined monastic life is a very good uh, training for living a good grihastha life because grihastha also means ashram. It's supposed to be self control. So you can carry that into the grihastha life. Mm. Yes, please. You were mentioning about how um, like one can still maintain monk life outside of like the brahmachari ashram within grihastha life. But what does that look like to maintain Krishna consciousness within Within Grihastha Ashram, well, the same principles apply. You keep good association. You uh, you f follow the uh, the regular program as best you can. What does it look like? Then you have to see some. Literally, you have to see some good Grihastas. In the modern world, generally Grihastas, uh, just the demands of this, what did Srila Prabhupada call it? Neck break society. It's English word is breakneck, and probably you used to call it neck break society. Maybe that just emphasizes it more. Uh, in, in the context of that, it's very difficult when people are working long hours. And, mm, it's very hard for them to keep up the uh, the standard of having a good morning program at home. Or you can live in a temple community and attend the programs in the temple like that. Just like Alachua. There are so many Grihastha devotees living around the temple. But actually only only a small percentage come daily to the temple programs. It's mostly yeah, the Prabhupada disciples, all the devotees. But the same principle applies. You chant your rounds and follow follow everything. But in Grihastha life, it's going to be somewhat compromised. That's all you do. You don't have the full immersion that you have in Brahmacharya life, and also you have that little independence whereby you can choose to do it or not do it. Whereas in, if you're living in the Brahmachari ashram, you don't have a choice. It, it's, it's a life of discipline. It doesn't mean that someone's there with a rod waiting to beat you, but it's just that everyone, <laughs> everyone is expected. To, yeah, you just can't sleep in in the morning. No, it's just not. No I, I remember saying that when, <laughs> when I first joined that... Uh, a couple of devotees, they used to sleep in, and they, they physically, they weren't allowed to. One of them, I remember, got thrown down the stairs. In his sleep, he refused. He clung onto the sleeping bag and was thrown down. We're a little more relaxed these days. <laughs> that was by uh, someone who's now a, a guru in our movement, threw him down the stairs. <laughs> you, uh, and... Uh, I asked him, and he said, uh, that guru, he said, no, no, we're still friends. <laughs> we have a good relationship. Because that devotee, he's still a devotee, even though he was, didn't like to get up. And, and there's another one, he was dragged all the way from in the Brahmacharya and dragged, 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 <laughs> and clinging to a sleepy bag and thrown in the cold shower. It is, it is... <laughs> But nowadays we say, look, if you don't want to, then, you know, it's a big world. You can come, come whenever you like. But if you don't follow, then you don't belong here, that's all. It's, you choose to be here, and there are terms and conditions, and you have to live up to them, that's all. If you don't, then, yeah, like I say, it's, it's, it's a big world out there. You can... You can choose to keep one foot in here, and oh, one point. Uh, as brahmacharis, sannyasis, monks, we don't live 
a cloistered life. Do you know what that means? Cloistered life. Cloister means the uh, cells in a mon in a monastery where the monks, or it may be in a nunnery also, where they 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 stay inside. It's for meditative. There are different kinds of monks. So those who have con the contemplative life, they may spend hours every day in their cloister. It means they're in a room on their own and they read scripture and they may say their rosaries or whatever and they contemplate on God. So we don't live a cloistered life. We, it means shut away. We're active in the world the world with all its temptations. So it is uh, advisable that brahmacharis don't go anywhere alone. Even if you go to the store, it's better go with someone because Maya is especially fond of brahmacharis. <laughs> And some principles, when we're moving in the world, we have to maintain. Just like you, uh, we, we don't, monks don't mix with women. That means if you're in the store and there's a woman there, yes, you, you, you can't avoid dealing with them, but just as much as necessary. And not, not rude or any such thing, but uh, that, that's an important principle. And then when we're moving in the world, there's so much opportunity. We can eat this and eat that, but we should stick to, stick to our principles, only take Krishna Prasad. All these things, if we, if we stick to that, that will help us. Wearing monks' clothes also helps. Because people, people expect you to act in a certain way. And it also helps to explain why if, if you're that uh, you, if you have to just like someone wants to give you some food or something you say and, and, and have some principles and people tend to understand that. Helps to distribute Bhagavatam sense. Helps to distribute Bhagavatam sense, yeah. So there's some basic guidelines. The basic guidelines are there in my Brahmacharya book. So Hare Krishna. One more question. Guru Maharaj, you know, as a uh, yourself, you know, as a Naishtika Brahmachari and you know sannyasi, you know, has your life changed a lot since being a Brahmachari to a sannyasi, or it's more well, or I less the same? I changed from Brahmachari to sannyasi. Uh, change of ashram. I didn't change that much internally, but people treat you very differently the moment you put on sannyas dress. I see that it, among Indians, especially, of course, and among our devotees, you don't change being the same person, with, but that recognition is, it, it's it's surprising at first, especially even devotees you know very well, and then they respect you much more. It's a it's a commitment. It's a big commitment. I would think especially when you're young and you take sannyas, that would be seen. If you're already 60 and then take sannyas, it may not be seen as such a big commitment. Nowadays, mostly they give older men sannyas. I took at age 32, I think I was. 32, which is quite young. Maharaj, it seems like as a brahmachari, you're like trained to do harinam, you're trained to do book distribution. But if you're not cut out for it, they say like, oh, you know. Not you cut out for doing Harinam. Everywhere it's the Yuga Dharma. <laughs> Everyone's supposed to do it. And my question is like they say. Book distribution, it may not be that everyone can get the mm. courage to do it. Or yeah. whatever it takes. And some may say, well, you're not cut out for there this. Are, there are ways to do it more passively also. You can have a book table and this and that. But... 
yeah, my question is some, somebody say I'm not, or they may say you're not cut out for this. You know, you, maybe you seem like a little lazy. You can just move to a farm. Lazy on a farm? <laughs> Farms are not meant for being lazy. Yeah. My question is, there's training in the Brahmachari Ashram for um, both Yeah, everyone should. Brahmachari life means you should be fully engaged. It's not, uh, spiritual life is not for lazy people. Even material life isn't for lazy people. No, you, you, uh, everyone has to, has to do some work. It's, and the grihasas they farm, but my question is, is there scope for training brahmacharis? At least in America, it doesn't really seem like there's scope for training men how to grow food. How to grow food? That's training my, how to grow food? That's my question, yeah. I mean, we, we need farm communities. Yeah, it just I seems agree. like that's only for the grihasas for some reason. I'm not sure why. Like, why there's no focus uh, in the brahmacharis. farms for grihasas? Well, especially for grihasas. Brahmacharis, once they get past the initial training period, they're expected to be active in the preaching mission, or they may be lifelong pujaris. So, brahmacharis can be of farms also, and then they may be in gurukul teachers or whatever. But it's especially for grihastas. A farm is an economic arrangement for living, which uh, brahmacharis don't do any economic arrangement for their living. Training how to grow food, you can go to university, get a degree, but if you just follow God's system, it's not that difficult, actually. <laughs> With all this modern chemical, so many arrangements with chemicals and machines, and it becomes so complex, you have to have a university degree to do farming. Although all... Uh, if if you want to call someone a simpleton, you call him a farmer, right? It's not expected that you have a super brain. It's a pretty simple thing. By God's arrangement, even if you don't put seeds in the ground, plants still grow. It's just a matter of organizing it. So there are things to be learned, but it's not that difficult. If you grow up doing it, then it's it's then you just know. Now, now is the season for planting this. Now is, now is the season for transplanting the rice. And it's just you grow up with it. Anyway, that's getting into another whole area. We should have farms for sure. So do it. You want to go and see? We have a few farms going on well, simple living, high thinking in India. You can go and visit. In Czech Republic, we have also. Of course, we have in America also, but there mostly it seems compromised with the the simple living, high thinking. They, they, they made it unnecessarily complicated. Mm. Yeah, and they advertise eco farms to get donations from the public, and, and the, the whole idea of produce your own food and live simply and chant Hare Krishna is a long way away. But you can visit. See, and if it can be done in Czech Republic, it can be done in America. It can be done anywhere. It means that there's some land and food grows. And you, you harvest it, offer it to cook it, offer it to Krishna. And distribute. That's all. It's not a simple thing. We think every in the modern age we think everything's got to be complex. <laughs> Growing food isn't complicated. Some things you have to learn. Like I say, which which crops to plant at which time of year, and you may have uh, different crops you plant with each other. And this and that, and uh, some things to be learned for sure. But Mother Earth is very generous. You see here, there's there's the city, but still, so many trees are growing. So many things can grow here. Mostly in Georgia, it's what cattle, poultry. 
all this kind of thing. Peaches is a big thing. Some nuts are grown. Peanuts. Jimmy Carter. He was a peanut farmer. Then became President of the United States. From Georgia, no less. Yeah. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Um, a lot of my friends grew up in the Krishna consciousness movement, but it seems like they aren't taking to brahmachari life, even though they know that the four ashrams go brahmachari, grihastha, vanaprast, sannyas, but there isn't that drive to enter the brahmachari ashram. Um, could you give some um, advice to maybe a way to inspire those young people to also take to the brahmachari ashram? <sighs> That's a really tough one. <laughs> <laughs> trying to wake up someone who's pretending to be asleep. <laughs> they can do. What about Braj Kishore? <laughs> 30 years old. Time to be a brahmachari. How old are you? 33. Mm. They can come. They're welcome. It's it's but everyone has their own individual choice. You can't force anyone. Okay, Hare Krishna. Yeah. All glories to his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. Vancha Kalpatarubhyas <coughs> Chakripa Sindhubi Evacha Patita Nam Pavani Bhil Vaishnavi. Dantain it higher to the Kung Padia, the Pate Kritva Chaka Kushatam Eta. A hum ravini, hey, Sad of a Sakla Vivai to Rat Goranga Shandra Charle Kurjana Parivada to Jano Yatata Tava Nanamukarana Vayam Pichara Yamana Hari Rasa Madira Madati Manta Puvi Vilu Tama Nirtama Nirisha Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna.